recent American criminal history. I'd harm someone each time. I'd... I'll plead not guilty right now. Who was this mysterious Ted Bundy? And what led him to earn the title of the Campus Killer? Ted Bundy was a heartless, evil-minded, and cold-blooded criminal in the United States during the 1970s. After more than a decade of denials, Ted has finally confessed to the kidnapping, violation, and murdering of 30-plus attractive young ladies in seven states between 1974 to 1978. Even though with all the evidence and confessions, I harm somebody's time. Ted has successfully managed to escape custody twice. And he escapes clean in an unknown direction. Serial killers are frequently deadly narcissists with horrifying fantasies. Conversations with a killer, the Ted Bundy tapes, implies that its subject, You are not guilty. I'm not guilty. One of America's most notorious serial killers constantly misled the media in his many interviews into feeding his glorified narrative of himself. Ted Bundy, whose full name was Theodore Robert Bundy, was an American serial killer and violator who became one of the world's most well-known criminals of the late 20th century. Bundy was born on November 24, 1946 in Burlington, Vermont to a family of five children. Bundy's birth was a source of private humiliation for his mother, whose very religious parents were mortified by her son's unlawful birth. Louise gave birth to Ted in a Vermont institution for unwed mothers, and she later moved her son to live with her parents near Philadelphia. Ted was birthed by Eleanor Louise Cowell, also known as Louise, when she was only 22 years old and unmarried. She was the youngest of three children, according to Anne Rule, a co-worker of Ted's and the author of the book, The Stranger Beside Me. Ted's father may have been Lloyd Marshall, an Air Force veteran and a graduate of Penn State. Ted's father's name was given as Jack Worthington by other sources, and some stories said that Ted's father also happened to be his grandfather, given that Ted's birth certificate states that his father is unknown. It is possible that the biological father's identity will never be revealed. Louise Bundy was married to Johnny Bundy in 1951. Even though Ted adopted his stepfather's surname, he is said to have harbored resentment toward him since he was too ignorant and from a working class upbringing. Johnny and Louise were married for many years and had six more children together. Despite his comfortable upbringing, Bundy appears to have come from a middle-class household. His gruesome fascinations began at a young age. Knives triggered his interests since he was only three years old. Bundy was a quiet but brilliant child who performed well in school but did not seem to get along with his schoolmates or other people easily. As a youngster, he began to develop a very dark side to his personality. Bundy enjoyed peering through other people's windows and had no hesitation about thinking of stealing anything he desired from other people's homes. Bundy had shown signs of mental illness since he was a child, according to his relatives, who recalled him sneaking into his grandfather's greenhouse to read his pornography while he was only in preschool. He placed butcher knives beneath the covers next to his 15-year-old aunt on several occasions when he was just three years old. Ted Bundy was an undergraduate student at a number of different colleges and universities, including the University of Puget Sound, Temple University, and the University of Washington. It provided him with a sufficient chance to research the routines and vulnerabilities of female co-eds who were among his most frequent targets, and he was a member of many distinct campus communities at the same time. Bundy did have a tough childhood, with a troubled connection with his stepfather and bullying as a result of his shyness. However, his intelligence and social skills later on allowed him to have a successful college career, and he formed a succession of seemingly normal emotional connections with women. Between 1974 and 1978, he assaulted and executed numerous young women in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Utah, and Florida despite his apparent stability. Linda Ann Healy, who was Bundy's first known victim, was executed in February 1974. 
Through the summer of 1974, Bundy was responsible for at least seven further homicides in Washington and neighboring Oregon. Two ladies who went missing from Lake Sammamish State Park in Seattle in July were among those executed in his brutal trademark manner. Witnesses eventually came forward to describe a man who identified himself as Ted and who approached them asking for assistance with a sailboat while wearing a sling. Despite the heinous nature of his crimes, Bundy became a celebrity, particularly after his 1977 escape from custody in Colorado. His charisma and intelligence gained a lot of attention throughout his trial. His story spawned a slew of popular books and films on serial killers. It also enraged feminist criminologists, who said that Bundy had been converted into a romantic character by the mainstream media. According to Bundy's confession, he was responsible for executing 30 young women across various states between the time of 1974 to 1978. Still, experts estimate the actual number of victims may have been closer to a hundred or more. The exact number of women Bundy executed will likely never be determined. It was common for him to violate his victims before beating them to death, and this was the pattern that he followed in most of his crimes. However, while there is some disagreement as to when Bundy began his elimination spree, the majority of sources agree that he began his murderous rampage around 1974. Numerous women in the Seattle area, as well as in neighboring Oregon, went missing during this time period. It just stopped us in our tracks. Some of the victims were said to have been last seen in the company of a young, dark-haired man known only as Ted. According to the reports, the majority of the time he lured his victims into his car by pretending to be injured and requesting help from them. Their generosity turned out to be a costly error. Bundy relocated to Utah in the fall of 1974 to attend law school, and it was about this time that women began to disappear in the state. He was arrested the next year after being pulled over by the police. His vehicle was searched, and a stash of burglary gear, including a crowbar, face mask, rope, and handcuffs were discovered. His arrest for possession of these tools prompted the police to begin investigating him for involvement in many more related cases. In 1975, Bundy was apprehended in connection with the kidnapping of Carol DeRanche, one of the few women who managed to escape from his grasp. He introduced himself as Officer Roseland. And he said that someone had been caught trying to break into my car. He was found guilty and sentenced to a 1 to 15 year prison term. In 1977, Bundy managed to break out of prison twice. Ted Bundy escaped last December from a Colorado jail while awaiting trial for murder. The first time, he was indicted on murder charges in connection with the death of a young Colorado lady, and he even elected to represent himself in the proceeding. During a visit to the courthouse library, he managed to escape by jumping out a window. Bundy jumped out of this second story window at the front of the Pitkin County Courthouse this morning. He was apprehended after a long manhunt that stretched over eight days. Bundy managed to evade capture for a second time in December. He was able to climb out of the hole he had dug in the ceiling of his cell after dropping more than 30 pounds in order to squeeze through the narrow entrance. The fact that Bundy had gone missing for 15 hours went unnoticed by authorities, providing the serial killer a significant advantage over the authorities. In the aftermath of his second jailbreak, Bundy made his way to Tallahassee, Florida, where he eventually settled. He broke into the Chi Omega sorority home at Florida State University on the night of January 14, 1978 and committed a series of disturbing acts. He attacked and brutally executed two of the young female students who were all in their 20s. Later on, Kimberly Leach, who was a 12-year-old girl, was discovered to have been abducted and executed by Ted Bundy on February 9, 1978. His deadly rampage came to an end after these crimes, when he was apprehended by the police the following February and arrested. 
the most incriminating evidence linking Bundy to the two Chi Omega killings at Florida State University were bite marks on one of the bodies that were a dead giveaway that the killer was indeed Bundy. In 1979, the judge who had sentenced Bundy to death made the following observation. It is a tragedy for this court to witness such a complete and utter waste of mankind, I believe, as I have witnessed in this courtroom. You're an exceptionally clever young man. You would have made an excellent lawyer, and I would have welcomed the opportunity to have you practice in front of me. But you chose a different path, my colleague. You're a bright young man. You made a good lawyer. I'd love to have you practice. Bundy, of course, wasted a great deal more than just his own life and education. The world has been deprived of the contributions that each of these women and girls could have made if their lives had been spared. In 1989, Bundy was given the death penalty and was sentenced to death by electric chair in the state of Florida. Since then, this mind-bubbling case has inspired numerous novels and films about serial killers. 